Hey everyone, so today in this video, we're going to learn how to set up and configure a simple Shadow Seal JS project so that you can understand what is going on underneath the hood with Shadow Seal JS. First, we'll need to make a new directory and then we'll open up in VS Code. We'll need to initialize this as a node project. You can use either npm or yarn. And of course, the dash y is just the flag for yes to just initialize everything by default. And finally, the important part where most of our configuration is going to live is the shadowclj's.eden file. And here we'll add a map. The first property that we'll need is a source path. And this is going to be the path to your source code. Eventually, you'll put it into source if this is a front end project. If, however, it's a full stack project, you might want to add a subdirectory for a CLJS where you'll have all your front end code. And that's what I'm going to be doing. And that would be a good idea to set a designated port for your end REPL so then you can connect your editor to your code. The next two properties are going to be very important. So dependency takes in a vector and builds is going to specify our closure script build process, including the dev server that we might need. Now the first dependency I'm going to add here is CIDR. And for most REPL integrations, CIDR is going to be required. And I know that it is for Kalva in VS Code. It might be built into Emacs, but I'm not sure. And before we populate the builds map, we might want to create some source files so that we know where and what we're targeting. I'll go ahead and make the directory source CLJS app. And if you're unfamiliar, the dash p is just so that we can use make directory to make a nested structure. And then finally, the entry file is going to be core.cljs. After you open it up, we can specify the namespace. And right now, we're not going to do anything fancy. We'll just log to the console, hello world. All right, back in the Eden file, the first property is going to be each property in the builds map. We'll specify the alias, or in node terms, is the script that you want to watch. And each alias needs its own build configuration. So here, we'll want to target the browser. You could also do node, in case you want to do a node project with Clojure. But in that case, why wouldn't you just use normal Clojure? which is a different story. Next, we'll need to specify the output directory. And this is where we're going to specify where in our project all the compiled JavaScript is going to live. Eventually, you'll want to add it into a resources directory in case you're going to create a full stack closure project because resources is where Java holds all of its assets. And finally, modules will specify our entry point, which of course is going to be app.core because that's the file and namespace that we created. Here where it says main is going to be the name of the compiled JavaScript. So what comes out is going to be main.js. And that's the bare minimum of what we need for a Shadow CLJS configuration. Now to run your app, you actually need to install Shadow CLJS into your node project. And this is going to be a node dependency. Once you've installed the Shadow CLJS, that'll call Shadow CLJS and run the watch command. And the app argument is going to be the name of your Java just build. So this thing right here. And you can go ahead and run that script. It might take a while to compile for the very first time. I realized I missed a step. So we need to go back. So as expected, the main.js file has been compiled. And this is some ES5 code. So have fun reading that if you want. But what we forgot to do is actually add an HTML file to actually host this JavaScript code. So we'll add an index HTML and this is going to go into resources public. Basically it'll be alongside the main.js file. So let's quickly add HTML here and then you'll want to add a script tag that points to the compiled JavaScript which is main.js. Now before we start our build chain again, I think I want to actually enhance our configuration a little bit. I'm going to add a new property here called DevTools so that we can configure our dev server. The HTTP root will tell Shadow the directory where all of our build files are going to live. And this is also how Shadow CLJS is going to access the index HTML. And let's also specify a port so that we can access it through localhost. And then another thing that we can do is instead of the entry file here, we can specify the init function where we call a function once shadow CLJS loads and we'll call that function init. We'll have to add in that function. 
so that we can actually be able to call it. And I'll take this hello world and put it in here. Now this is going to be some weird syntax, but we can add some metadata macros in here. And this is going to be the export, which is akin to module.exports in node world or a export default in ES6 syntax. But now we can restart our dev server. And after the build is completed, we can open it up in a browser, let's just pick Chromium, go to localhost 3000, and there's our little hello world in the console. Now there's something important that I want to show, and we're going to print a simple closure map here. The properties inside of it doesn't really matter, but once you save and go back to the browser, you might have to refresh. But you'll see here that we get the compiled version of that closure map. And it's not very readable for us, so we need to actually edit how the Chrome console outputs closure script data structures. What you'll need to do is open up the DevTool settings and go to where it says console. And you want to highlight enable custom formatters. Once you do that, you just refresh. And now we can see the closure map as it's supposed to look like. We can take that one step further by adding the binary age dev tools library. And then we can add the dev tools to the preload option of our dev server. This will mean that the closure script dev tools will be loaded before our code is loaded. And the result is the map comes out prettier. <laughs> basically. And we also have this little thing here saying that the CLJS dev tools are working. Oh, I want to make one more note. So the custom format is only work in Chrome based browsers. So this isn't going to work if you're using Firefox, but it should work in Chromium, Chrome, and Brave. And the reason is because custom format is, is a security risk. So the Firefox team is looking into emulating this feature in the future with something a little more secure. But for now, this is okay. So, so far, nothing too exciting. So now let's expand upon this and install React as well as React DOM. In ClojureScript, the go-to library for React is Reagents. However, I want to try out Helix because it's a library that embraces a more modern React way of thinking rather than turning everything into the closure way of doing React. So we'll need to add a new dependency and we'll add a vector here, the name of the library as well as the version, which is 0 0.013. And then in app core, we could add our requires. So we'll import dependency from core and D from Helix Dawn. This way we can define an app component and it'll just be an h1 that says hello world. Now we can interrupt with the underlying JavaScript given to us by npm. And that's where we can get react dom. We're going to create a render function that calls react dom render. Uh, we'll also need this dollar sign macro here. The dollar sign macro basically renders the underlying closure version of the react component. And react dom render needs a HTML element to know where we're going to render this. So we're going to add a div with the ID of root into our HTML so that this render function could actually work. And then we'll replace the init function to just call render. As mentioned, we'll need to add that div into our HTML with the ID of root. And now we can go ahead and restart our server. All right, waiting to build. After the build's complete, we can go back to our browser Refresh so that it loads in the new JavaScript. And there's our hello world rendered by React. And at this point, you can start playing around with ClojureScript. And as mentioned, Helix is using more modern React workflow. So there's the inclusion of hooks. And you can see that it's being used here in a let block. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned how Shadow CLJs works and that you start working with ClojureScript in the future. All right, I'll see you all next time.